Okay, welcome back to The Breakfast Show. Now, before the 20th century, the South China Sea and the Straits of Malacca were part of the busiest trading network the world had ever seen. The maritime route between China, India and the Middle East and Europe was far more substantial than the fabled Silk Road, and most of it traversed this part of Southeast Asia. Sten Schustrand, in cooperation with the Department of Museum and Antiquities and the Malaysian Maritime Archaeology team, went on a mission to recover artifacts from historical shipwrecks at the bottom of the Nanhai. The nine shipwrecks dating from the 10th to 19th century are of Chinese, Thai and Portuguese origin. That's the Tanjong Simpang, Turiang, Nanyang, Longquan, Royal Nanhai, Zuande, Singtai, Wanli and Desaru shipwrecks. The artifacts recovered found at the bottom of the South China Sea originates from the Song, Yuan, Ming and Qing dynasties. The search and recovery project has indeed contributed to the country's heritage wealth. Artifacts from the shipwrecks are on display at the Malaysian Maritime Archaeology Exhibition in Museum Negara and for the first time, Malaysia Malaysians will get to own a piece of history through the treasures of the Nanhai exhibition and auction currently going on at the Kuala Lumpur Convention Center. So although everybody else who finds shipwreck in the region have chosen to sell their portion of artifacts overseas, I have decided not to. It's, it's not appropriate. It's not right. These pieces belong to Malaysia and that's why we are here and selling part of that portion which belongs to us after sharing with government. You should have the first option to buy this. Projects like these are vital to the nation, bringing together the pieces of history we have buried deep under the sea. It opens up new possibilities and a chance to learn more about our heritage and the history of our country. Uh, Nick, do we don't know, we need to have uh, far more research on our maritime heritage. Uh, that's what we have here is the first of the its kind for the starters. We have uh, shipwreck from the, the earliest dated on the 10th century to the 19th century. So this is the first start. So we're going to have a follow-up research by then and then we're going to train and then we learn about more in maritime archaeology. Fantastic. Now, if you've ever been fascinated with the treasures that lie on the sea, with us today we have two guests from the Nanhai Marine Archaeology, Sandurian Berhard, who will tell us all about the historical and heritage value of the shipwrecks. They're Karen Lowe and Marine Archaeologist Stern Schuster. And welcome to the show. Thanks Thank very much for being on this morning. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. And I see you've brought a whole load of goodies here. Huh? <laughs> now, um, obviously, first of all, just, just tell us a little bit about the treasures of Nanhai um, exhibition, first of all. Do that. Well, this uh, has been a one-year-long project of um, planning and um, uh, getting sponsors and getting the whole event together. Uh, there's uh, three of us in the team. Uh, there's me, uh, Jennifer Rodrigo, and uh, Cheunku Mahira, and it was very, very tiring. And but we managed to put it together, and now um, uh, I think it's a great exhibition, and um, we're selling our stuff. Wow. It's good. So are these some of the pieces that you'd be seeing um, at yes, the exhibition? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, so Sten, tell me, just we'll start off with these pieces first. Um, I mean, they're beautiful. How, how old are some of these, um, just for interest's sake? Well, the, the oldest piece here comes from a shipwreck in, uh, we found in Sabah. Okay. And it's this piece here, together with another 302 pieces. And this one is 1,000 years old. 1,000 years old? 1,000 years old. It comes from uh, the oldest uh, shipwreck uh, ever found in Malaysia. Wow. Uh, interesting in the way that it shows the earliest maritime trade into Borno. Right, and, yeah. And the type of pottery they were producing and selling at that time. So that's a thousand years it's old. a thousand years old. We have this piece here. That one is 540 years old. Oh, gosh. A uh, little Celadon Jowlets originally. And interestingly, is, is this piece comes from the same shipwreck. But as you can see, this one has a much better glaze. Yes. This has to do with firing temperatures. But, but these two are found in the same shipwreck. Oh, so really? This is how we can find different uh, survival conditions of them. This is a nice one. This one here is from the shipwreck, the latest shipwreck we found. This right. one is 375 years old. Wow, this looks like something I could actually buy today. I know, you in can, fact, I you, mean... you can buy it after the program. You can oh, buy right, it. Oh, right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This one is 375 years old wow. and represents a, a, a different technique. This one is painted in, in blue, the other one is celadon glazed. Oh, yeah. Very popular amongst uh, Malaysian collectors and overseas collectors. So 375 years. And this piece here is looks brand new. 
Yeah, it does. But it isn't. It's, it's 170 years old. Wow. It's so a, it's a little bit of a spread on Yeah, this is quite a lot of different ages mm. here. Mm. So, I mean, how, how many... I mean, these have all come from shipwrecks that mm. you've um, excavated around um, the Straits of Malacca, is that right? And uh, The South China Sea, South sorry. South China Sea, only. Yeah. And um, how many wrecks have you actually discovered out there? You, in, in South China Sea, we'll find nine shipwrecks. Nine shipwrecks. Between the 10th and the 19th century. <sighs> nine altogether. So the oldest would be the 1,000-year-old yeah. ship. Yeah. What's the most recent uh, um, find? I mean, which one have you been excavating the most recently? It is the, what we call the Wan Li shipwreck, this one here. Wan Li. It was found in uh, 2000. Last year, 2003. Right? We yes. found in 2003. Right. We excavated in 2004 mm -hmm. and spring of 2005. Wow. It takes a long time actually to excavate. How long does it actually take? I mean, how, how long is the process to actually from discovering it to actually salvaging uh, or discovering all of the treasures inside? It's 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 in different phases. Okay. Uh, we found that shipwreck in in November 2003. We got a permit with the government shortly thereafter. We could do a recovery. You have to do cargo recovery. You have to take up all the pieces first. We did that April, May, June 2004. Then we go back September, October, November to remove uh, ballast rocks laying on top of the ship so we can map the ship okay. itself. And that work was completed in uh, May, June, July in this year. So okay. now we have done all the on-site work. Okay. But there's a lot more to come, of course. It's what happens after you've actually retrieved the uh, the things from the ship? Once it's all taken up, it's got to be registered, clean, desalinated, right. conserved, preserved. So it's uh, actually a very long and meticulous process, isn't very it? Very long. And then, a, then you have post research. Then you right. got to find out where the things were made. So where was, some of, where was some of these made, um, for example, maybe this one, do you know? This one was made in, in southern China, uh, but, but we don't know exactly where in southern China it was made. It still needs to be done. But this piece, the 540 euro piece, okay. we, we know exactly where it was made. Really? We have, we have gone back to the production site, located the exact kiln where this one was fired 540. Seriously? Yeah. We can do that by analyzing different uh, decorative styles by looking at the glaze and and then we can go to uh, looking waste piles in production sites you know things that we broke understood when, when yeah. we made it to throw it away and then we can compare that and we know exactly where they were made that's phenomenal so this is in northern thailand northern uh, thailand northern thailand actually chinese potters moved to thailand after 1371 and so it's a chinese pot Similar to made in China before, moved to Thailand after 1371. Wow. This one is made in China in, in the most famous of all pottery center in Jindiseng. Okay. But in Jindiseng, we have actually located the exact production site called wow. Wayinke. That's fantastic. Exact We're actually port. going for a commercial break right now. We'll be right back with more on, uh, on these beautiful artifacts here. I think this one's got a little card on it as well. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more from the breakfast show in just a second. Welcome back as we continue our fascinating discovery of history with our two guests from uh, Nanhai Marine Archaeology, Sindhu and Burhan. Now, we've been talking about all the pieces here. One, one question I have, I mean, I, I still can't get over this. A thousand years old, you know, just, just the, the history that goes with this. It's just, it's just phenomenal. But how, how is these, I mean, because this is for sale, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, there's a little price tag on the side here. Am I allowed to mention how, how much sure. it is? This is a thousand years old. This is a this is an antique bowl here, and it's going for seven hundred ringgit. Only. Yeah, I know. It's it's amazing. You know, just to, to hold it and think of all of the people who have held this like mm. such a long time ago. You know, it's just mm. phenomenal, and it's only seven hundred ringgit. Mm. How how do you sell things like these? I, mean, I would have imagined they'd have to go into museums. Uh, they do go into museums. They do. Like I said earlier, we work together with the Department of Museums and Antiquity, and we train personnel in the museum. Okay. We didn't have any marine archaeologists before in Malaysia, so we trained their people. And then in the end of the day when all the work is done, which we finance, we then share the artifacts with the museum. Right. Okay. They get 30 percent and we get 70 percent of the artifacts. Okay. And amongst the 30 percent, they get all unique and singular artifacts. We, right. make, we make sure that they, they are in the museum. So if there's two, they get one, we get one, and then everything is shared. So we don't sell anything any type or any style which isn't in the museum. In a museum or, already, or right. Anything, yeah. So there's always at least one piece to, to remain forever. Absolutely. Right. But I'm sure that most of the people who do, I mean, 
it, it must you must do great business with collectors, really, isn't it? I mean, I doubt this is the sort of thing people just kind of walk along and say, oh, well, I'll pick one of those up. People kind of, I, mean, I think a lot of people do get the kind of, the impact, really, mm. don't they, of mm. just how mm. special it is to have something like this. There's, 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 there's a lot of background to it. It's, you know, the collectors who are the collectors. Malaysians are rather new to collecting yeah. antiques. You, you, you will find a lot of collectors in Europe who may have a better appreciation for it. But yes, everybody was fascinated by the age. I mean, 540 years ago, and it's... it's but uh, yeah, they are, they are quite unique too. Maybe the most important thing is you know for sure that this one is a thousand years old. It's been well researched. It's not a matter of going to an antique shop, yeah, true. you know, and be sort of doubtful as to whether this, there is no question about any one of those pieces. They come from a shipwreck, all these pieces on that shipwreck is of the same age. And maybe that's assurance you, you can have here in Malaysia at this time. Oh, just, just for interest, though, where were these pieces heading? I mean, uh, for example, I mean, they were all on ships, obviously. Mm. So uh, you were mentioning earlier, this is, this is brand new. This has never been used before. Yeah. Because it was fresh, um, you know, and it was, it was to be delivered, mm. right, for sale. But where, where were they heading? Who would have been buying these pieces had the ship not sunk? It is interesting. It's sort of brand new. Yeah, but, it, it it, isn't. but it's, it's a thousand, thousand years old. old. <laughs> and never been used. And never been used. None of them have ever been used. It, the different ships, uh, you have to see them in different times. There okay. were very, very precise trading patterns, but those changed over those thousand years. This one was on its way to Brunei. Okay. Brunei in those days were the whole island of Borno. Right. And we have found on land, on land we have uh, found similar type of pots in graves and others. So that's how we can say this is likely to go in there. Location of a ship, like says it was going there. Uh, this one here, 170 year old, that's when Singapore had been established. Yeah. And the location of that and the composition of the surrounding says that ship was on its way to Singapore or to Malacca. Wow. This one, 375 years ago, that's when the Portuguese were still in Malacca before the Dutch had taken over. Wow. And in fact, we have all sorts of evidences on the site that this ship was actually shot down by the Dutch. Portuguese ship on his way from China to Malacca and going to distribute the pottery in Malacca. But he was shot down by the Dutch. It was a common procedure by the Dutch, <laughs> trying to interrupt, uh, you know, the, the trading the, routes and the trading routes to Malacca. Wow. And it lays right in the middle of that. So each one of these has such a story. That's right, every one of them. This one was, was on his way from Sea Sachin Lai in Thailand on, on, a, on a Chinese designed vessel that built in Thailand of tropical hardwood. And he was on his way, we believe, to the kingdom of Majabahit in, in Java. Wow. And all of these, you know, with the, the rich history and stories, you can actually, people can actually take a piece like this home, yes. right? So where, where do they go if they want to, um, for, where is the exhibition actually being uh, held right now? We are right now in um, the banquet hall, uh, okay. level three uh, at the Kiel Convention Center. Okay. And we will be there until uh, the 11th, that is Sunday. And we open daily from um, 11 a.m. till 9 p.m. Okay, so mm -hmm. if you'd like to take um, a little piece of history, do, uh, do take a look over at the, uh, the Treasures of Nanhai exhibition. Okay, thank you both very much for being on the show today. Pleasure. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's actually all the time we have for on The Breakfast Show this morning. We're now going over to Adriana Aris for the 10 a.m. World News Headlines.